different trade or a different family member, and they're going to tell you about their, their particular job. They're going to tell you some of the tools they would use in that job, and they are also going to tell you about some of the natural resources they use for that particular job. Do you know what natural resources are? Does anybody know what they are? Anybody in Ms. Holmes' class? Natural resources are things that are on the earth that God made. Not things that we made, but things that are on the earth already. Like water and wood and fire, plants. So listen and see what natural resources they had to use. Because remember in the colonies, they didn't have the factories and stores like you have today. So they had to make most of their things themselves. So we're going to start over here. And you can just, just turn your head this way. And we're going to start at this particular table right here with our first group. Go ahead and begin. We are the colonial fathers. We hunt, fish, shear sheep, and plant gardens. Shearing sheep is cutting off its wool to make clothes and blankets. Farmers have many tools. One of the most important tools we use is a wooden plow to tear up ground and provide food for our family. Some other important tools we use is a cradle size and a winnower to harvest and gather grain. Since farmers have so many animals, we needed pokes to not let animals get away. We use guns and fishing poles to hunt and provide food for our family. I'm going to tell you about some natural resources we use. We use wood for building and fire for burning the wood to keep us warm as well as other things. We, we use the soil to plant our crops and the animals to help us plow our field and to provide food for our family. Here is a picture that, here is a picture that you might, that fathers might have used. We are the colonial mothers. Our job is to cook, bake, wash, weave, make candles, bread, and soap. We preserve food, smoke meat, and clean the cabin. Here's another mother who is going to tell you about some of the tools we use. When we run out of butter, we don't drive to the store and buy a couple of pounds. We have to milk a cow, then make our own butter. Churning butter is a job done by women or children. First, we pour fresh cream into a butter churn. Then, we push the handle called a dasher up and down. Eventually, the cream turned into butter and butter milk. Colonial mothers use many natural resources. We use animal hides for boots, coats, and mittens for our families. We use feathers from our geese to stuff mattresses and make them soft. We also grow grain and vegetables in our gardens to feed our families. This poster shows what a colonial mother is. We are the children. Working in fields, I feed animals, gather fruit, vegetables, and berries. Sometimes I knit cook, and even clean. I, at school, some of the older kids read a lot. I also make clothes and care for younger children. Here is a picture of a child doing chores, and here is the next child telling you about school. We colonial children would play with yo-yos, <coughs> marbles, bows and arrows, tops, and cards. Our tools were on anything that was available at the time. I am going to tell you about some natural resources that children would use. I can use grass for making whistles. My dolls are made from corn cob flowers and twigs. I use <coughs> cotton to spin into thread and cloth. Here is a sign that we have drawn with some of the things that colonial children would have had. We are the apothecaries. The apothecary is the town pharmacist or druggist which means he makes the medicines for the sick and injured. Sometimes, if the doctor isn't there, the apothecary will act like the doctor and do everything that the doctor will do. Here are the clothes that an apothecary might wear. Some tools that we use are a grater and a mortar and pestle like this one to grind the herbs into powder and paste, a glass beaker like this one to measure liquids, and a weigh scale like this to weigh things like this. We also use an herbal and a pharmacopoeia, which are books, to figure out which herbs make which medicine. 
Most of the natural resources we use are spearmint, garlic, rose hips, vinegar, many parts of the oranges, cinnamon, which is also known as bark, rosemary, clove, chalk, and calamine. We also use some of your everyday beverages, such as water and orange juice. A beaker, mortar and pestle, and weigher is on the shop sign you might see. Hi, we are the Bar and the Woodworkers. We cut beard, hair, and sometimes have to perform minor surgeries, such as pulling teeth and bleeding people. We are also wig makers, so we make wigs in the style the customer desires. <coughs> in the future, barbers will use electricity, but we have no electricity. Here are a couple pictures. One of a barber cutting hair and a barber washing someone's hair. Another of a wig maker making a wig and a completed wig. Another of a barber pulling someone's <coughs> ears. And the last one, a barber bleeding somebody. <coughs> we use scissors to cut hair, razors to cut grown men or boys hair, combs to smooth out hair, perfume to make the wig smell good, curling irons to curl hair, and a barber pole to attract people into the barber shop. What I'm showing you are a pair of scissors. We use these to cut hair. This, these are combs. We use these to get knocked out of people. Here are some natural resources that can be used. Horse hair, cotton, and human hair too. Here's cotton, one of the natural resources that we use. We also use silk thread to attach the hair to the wig. Here's a sign that you might see out of our shop. <coughs> we are the blacksmiths. We make things out of black metal called iron. One of the things we make is a horseshoe. We have to get the metal just the right temperature so we can bend the metal into the shape of a horse's foot. Here's a horseshoe like we would make. We use hammers and tongs to hold and to shape iron. We use an anvil to pound iron on. We use a washer to flick water on the fire and gigantic bellows to make the fire bigger. There is a hammer we might use. I would like to tell you about some of the natural resources we use. Charcoal, logs, water, iron, air, coal, rock core, twigs, and fire are all important in our trade. This is a sign you might see outside our shop, which is a anvil, hammer, two horseshoes, tongs, and an oar, which is a rock that has iron in it. We are the brick makers. <coughs> we make bricks for homes for people who live in them. When people needed a house, we would build them. The first settlers made homes from logs, but now we make bricks from the natural resources we can find. Here is another brick maker to tell you about the tools we use. We use nail clubs to make bricks. One of the tools we use is a thumb nail. A thumb nail is used to thread the nail clip. It is pulled by a horse. Another tool we use is a wooden mold. It is used to shape the brick. the bricks faster. Here's an example of a brick we might make. We use, we, we use sand, water, and lime to make bricks. Clay is used to make clay. some sand and water that we use in our trees. We are the candle makers. We make candles to light up the room and houses other than your fireplace. Interestingly, our job is only done once or twice a year. We can make up to 500 pounds of candles in one day. When we rely on candles, we can make like these in order to complete their evening chores. I'm going to tell you about some candle making tools. First of all, you need a wick to dip into wax. You also can use extra string to tie to the wick so you don't get burnt. Finally, we use a big pot to melt the wax. We use a fireplace to make the wax hot. 
We candle makers use many natural resources. Some of these include animal fat for tallow, beeswax, milkweed silk, or cotton fibers. We also use fire for melting the wax and sticks for tying the wicks when dipping. For scented candles, we use berries, honey, gin ginger, pine, herbs, seeds, and flower petals. Here is a sign you might see outside of our shop.